This is not an especially unique innovation. It's my cutoff sled. Uh, two pieces of plywood under a rather thick push bar. I'm quite a fan of lightning holes. So I just removed some material to try and make it a little bit lighter and a little easier to handle. I used just one eighth inch birch plywood for the bed of the sled. That uh, one advantage there is that I can make better use of the saw for thicker for thicker material. And more of the blade will penetrate through thicker material with a thin, a thin bed on my insert. The other thing is not having a crossbar at the far end means that I'm pretty much unlimited on the width of material that I And finally, it'll slide underneath my blade guard and dust pickup. As a safety feature, I did add a metal tab at the back here, if I do push version of another table saw must-have. It's a miter sled. Two hardwood guides, some scrap lumber, two fences set at exactly 90 degrees. So, in cutting miters, always keep the inside, for example, for example, cutting miters for picture frames, keep the inside of the frame towards you. perfect miter. This is my sled for making finger joints or box joints and it works pretty well. Most of the dimensions, basic dimensions and ideas come from uh, a YouTube video and plans published by Ed Stiles, S-T-I-L-E-S. -E it's a lead screw, 16 thread per inch, 3 eighths rod. Um, a clamp here for holding the uh, sides and ends of uh, boxes that I want to make finger joints with, and a, a counter device on the end. One, two, three, four. I put handles, handsaw type handles on each end, and a, a handle on the cross carriage. I even installed a little mirror per Ed Style's suggestion. There's a stop block for to help align the boards and the first step I'll do is back out the suggesting screw just a little bit and make a cut to establish the exact length of the stop block. I pushed it against the side. And I have a, a stop that I drop in here between the nail and the top to stop the sled so the blade doesn't come out behind. Then, I've established which uh, is to be the top and the outside. So, I'm installing these in the carriage against the, the longer boards against the stop block and since I'm doing half inch notches and a half inch data blade I will position the box ends with a spacer block exactly half an inch inwards.
tighten the clamps and cut the notches. One more thing before I cut the notches, uh, I have a little spacer block exactly the same thickness as these sides and ends of the box I'm going to cut and I'm going to use it to set the blade height and that will establish the, the depth of the notches. Okay, perfect finger joints. To show the components of the sled, I'm just going to take it apart. Taking off the counter wheel, taking off the hand wheel, and I'm just going to spin the threaded rod up. I've put a steel bushing in each end plate here for, to provide a bearing for the, for the threaded rod. The carriage just lifts off the backbone of the sled. And to move the carriage across the backbone, I've captured a couple of flanged nuts. All aluminum plates. That re with a hex hole cut into them and a nut with a flange on it. So, of course, the hole through this part of the carriage is two saw grooves cut into two mirror image pieces that, that are glued together. And you've got a, the, the same kind of uh, nut, flange nut, with a little re retaining plate on this end. So, because there's nothing, there's really nothing to hold this down onto the carriage while you're making the cuts, it's important to, to bear down on it while sliding the sled across the saw. One other feature of this sled is a sacrificial strip so that there's no tear out on the back side of the box pieces. So, before a project is started, you can position the tear out strip so that there's new wood over the saw groove and just tack these strips into place. There is a learning curve to have good success making box joints and I'd strongly recommend that um, you try a project with scrap woods first it's tricky to get the, the dado blade thickness precisely correct. It might take some thin paper shims to get it where you're happy with the, the thickness of the tongues and the notches in the, in the joints. But uh, once you master it, it's a tool that can make very neat looking box, uh, box joints from 
like quarter inch, three eighths inch, half inch, uh, three quarter inch, any any factor of the 16 threads per inch, a threaded rod, and any factor of the uh, thickness of dado blades that you can make up. This is a fairly simple idea. In lieu of a nice outfeed table, uh, I've got a simple outfeed support uh, slides inward so I can store the saw compactly against the wall and slides out so it provides enough support that I can cut 8 foot material. You'll find that we need some small ramps to feed flimsy material up onto the roller There's rather small diameter. And we need the channels on the underside of the table. The, one, the channel on this side is right close to the sidewall of the saw. But to give the saw motor room to tilt, when we tilt the, tilt the, the blade, I had to space this uh, bar uh, some distance out from the sidewall of the saw. Here's the channel under the left side of the saw. Just a couple of hardwood uh, strips with sheet metal screws holding it to the sidewall of the uh, saw cabinet. Here's the support under the right side and you can see the spacers between the channel and the saw sidewall. The uh, heart of my dust collection system is this um, dust collector branded the Woodworker's Choice, which I picked up at a uh, tool show. 1.2 horsepower, uh, 700 cubic feet per minute, 5 inch diameter inlet connected to a, a, an 8 foot plenum. dust collection from my saw is kind of a three-pronged approach. Um, I've, sealed, I've tried to seal up the cabinet, so I've got this hardboard covering over the drive end of the cabinet, and the, there's two pieces here that kind of slide it together to provide a minimum opening just for the an opening for the belt and an opening for the motor support rods. I've got a, a block for the opening where the uh, saw tilts and a block for the opening where the angle of tilt pointer moves. And then I tried to wad in some material in the, to fill up the gap around between the saw cabinet and the saw table. Then I built a hopper into the bottom of the stand. So the main outlet, dust outlet from the cabinet is out through this hose into a Y box. From my router table, I have an elbow under the table and a hose coming down to this Y box. And inside the Y box is a flapper, which I control from the front of the saw. When the flapper is moved to block flow from the router, then dust selection airflow is directed to the hose from the saw through the large hose that goes to my shop vacuum. Third is the blade guard suction which goes to another selector on the plenum I have a plenum selector here where I can select from the overhead guard the bandsaw oscillating sander and one that's not used right now well I hope you enjoyed my two videos on my 
table saw modifications and hope it gave you some ideas that you could find useful. Yeah. Appreciate if you'd sh share my video with friends and associates. Uh, please think about subscribing and uh, invite you to have a look at my website. Addresses in the text below. Thanks for watching.